Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Python and the Paramico library to SSH to Linux machines and run commands. Additionally, we're going to be looking at how to do that as super user do or root um, so that we can um, run any command that we choose without permissions being an issue. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you've been looking for a way to maybe do some automation with Linux machines, this is definitely something you'll want to watch. We're going to do a quick walkthrough now. So I am going to load up my editor, which is PyCharm, and I've already created a brand new project called Paramico-SSH, and inside of that, a virtual environment has been created under the VM folder, which I have sourced in my terminal. So that's where we're going to get started. The next thing we're going to do is create a new file. I'm going to call that file <clears throat> Commander. No extension. And then we're going to call out where our interpreter should be loaded from and import the Paramico library. Paramico is not installed yet, so we're getting an error. So if we head over to our terminal, pip install Paramico, that'll take just a second. Great. All right, now next step, we're ready to set up our client. So paramico.client.ssh client is how we instantiate Paramico. And now we have a client. And the next thing we want to do is load the system host keys. So this will do just like what it says. It'll load the known host file with all the keys for existing known SSH systems so that we can utilize those without having to add them. Um, <clears throat> Client.connect is how we'll actually connect to a machine and I for this course I've already or sorry for this tutorial I have already set up some uh, hosts in DigitalOcean so I'm just grabbing an IP address here and then pasting it here uh, I set these machines up for a course that I have and so they've already got a username I created on it called jbond you'll want to do something similar if you don't have um, a machine to test with you could use your Mac if it's running SSH otherwise I assume you've got uh, access to a public cloud like DigitalOcean or AWS or GCP and you can create a virtual machine there establish a new username and password and you'll be able to log in with it using this so next thing we need to do is run a command so we're first going to capture all the input returned from this command which is exec command so the method is exec command. So we call the paramico client and exec command for execute command. And I'm just going to run the command who am I. <clears throat> After that runs, we need to say for line in standard out dot read lines. So for the line in the standard output, so whatever comes back, we want to print the line with no space, no white space. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is basically tell Paramico that we're not going to be sending any more input, so it's safe to close the channel. If you don't do that, you'll get an error. Okay, now let's give this a test. We'll want to actually first just uh, set the uh, execute permission for a commander, so we'll be able to run it with the dot forward slash. If this works, we'll see jbond, and we did. And now just to prove that it is working, we'll change the command here to LSLA to list all the files and folders on the system. Fantastic. So we know that's working perfectly. This is great. We could utilize this to run any commands we want with the exception of commands that require root level privileges, uh, which we're going to show you now how to do. So, or I'm going to show you now how to do. <clears throat> so before we close, we're going to keep the, well, instead of the LSLA, I'll keep the, um, the who am I here just to keep it running two commands. Um, but we're actually going to create a channel, uh, client invoke shell. So what this does is it creates a shell. Um, instead of doing this, you know, one command execution and closing the channel, this will create a channel uh, with a shell and keep that shell open. So we could run multiple commands and go back and forth, back and forth until we decide to close it at the very end. So <clears throat> after we've created this shell, um, we're essentially going to want to look and make sure that it's the channel is ready to receive input. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, checking the buffer. So while not buff ends with and then the dollar sign is saying, hey, I'm looking for this dollar sign prompt until I see a, a, 
the line that ends with that, I know that we haven't seen the prompt yet. So to receive the input from the channel, we have to do a channel receive. We then have to say the number of bytes we want to receive, which I always just do 9999. Uh, nine, nine. And then we have to decode that for UTF-8 to make sure it's readable. Okay, and then every time we do this, we want to append the uh, response to the buffer. And then this way, through each iteration, we're checking, uh, is it on the buffer now? Is it on the buffer now? Is it on the buffer now? And we'll just keep receiving line after line, uh, packet after packet, the data from that channel until we're sure that it ends with dollar sign. And once we see that, uh, will then allow it to break on out of this while loop and move to the next section. That's how we'll know it's ready to receive a command. And so in this case, the command we're going to want to run is a sudo s. And uh, to send that, we say channel send and command, and you have to encode it <clears throat> when you send it. Now that we've sent it, we need to uh, we're going to get a response, and in my case, it's going to ask for a password. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that we um, see that password prompt, and, and just like we did with the previous dollar sign buffer, and then send the password after that. So here we go. You always got to reset the buffer, and then you say, while, oops, this one's going to be slightly different, while password is not in buff. Uh, sorry, the is is wrong. <clears throat> and then it's just the, the same thing that we're used to here. We have to always channel receive 9999, decode it for UTFA, append it to the buffer. Okay. And so then it'll, you know, once it says password, we'll want to send it over. So we'll say password is jbond123, you always got to have a new line when you send a command in the channel for it to be, it's like hitting return, you know, uh, and then we'll say password and code. There we go. So now we've sent the password. And then the final thing we need to do is just like we did the first time, we're looking for the new root prompt, which looks like this. It ends with a hash mark or a pound um, or all the other names for that symbol. <clears throat> And so then the same thing, right? We just need to receive data until we see that. So channel receive 9999 decode UTF-8. So this is all very repetitive. So obviously, uh, if you were to do this yourself, I would recommend you build a function that uh, is modular enough to handle these interactions. So you don't know. Oh, and I forgot to reset the buffer. That's very important before you start each sort of stanza of these while loops. Cool. So now we'll know once we have that root prompt that we're root. So now we can execute whatever command we want. And we're going to execute who am I once again, just to prove that we're root, because this time we want it to say root. Um, and so channel send uh, commands encode. Cool. And then finally, we, we need to receive the um, output of that command. So basically, like once we send the who am I command, we want to receive the prompt one more time so that we know all the data has come back. So I'm actually not, I'm just going to copy and paste this previous line because it's the exact same check. And then finally, we should be able to say for line in buff split new line. So the buffer that we received, we want to split it on new line. And then here, we're actually going to do a slice. And the reason is because the first element in the uh, returned output is the command that we sent. And the last element is the, the prompt. Uh, and we don't care about either one of those. We just care about the data in the middle, which is all the results returned from the command. And then finally, we're just going to print the line and strip out the white space. OK, and this is still here, but I'm going to. OK, so now let's give that a go. See if that runs. So again, we should get jbond and then root. Perfect. So we know that worked. So now, um, coming back over here, we could do mm, 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 cat etsy shadow, which is a command you could only run as root. 
And then up here on this one, I'm going to run the same command. Now, this is going to fail with permission denied, but I'm actually not printing any errors right now. I'm only printing the, the standard out here. So right below that, I'm going to go ahead and print standard error. And that way, otherwise we'd get nothing printed on this. But with that, we'll see that it'll say permission denied, and then it'll say uh, root. We'll see. Yeah, the standard error outputs a little ugly, I think. Oh, maybe maybe that's not how you print the error on standard error. But definitely uh, the cat Etsy shadow worked. Let's figure out why standard error didn't work. Probably have to print that differently. What did I do? Oh, it's the I'm not. You gotta you gotta do this output the exact same way. So we'll do this. It's an object and not a uh, like a stream and not a uh, cool. So now now if I rerun that, that should work. Yeah, that looks like it worked. There you go. Permission denied. So that's our first command running where we're not root. And then boom, we're able to do this. And so now you guys have seen all my encrypted uh, root passwords, the hashes for those, so you can just crack them and break into my machine. But it's a digital ocean machine, so I don't care. Um, that's the end of the tutorial. If you enjoyed this, I, I have a course that goes into more detail on how to build this, use this library. I built uh, Commander at other companies under other names, and we used it for patching systems. Uh, so you would add, you know, traditionally threading to this and make it really fast so you could manage hundreds of machines in seconds. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you're interested in the course, you can find it at ansibleclone.com. And I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the, the channel. Take care.